It's February 1965. Maple Farm has its first residence, a small group of horses, two females and one male, Debbie, Susan and Ringo. This particularly rare breed was considered nearly extinct, but due to breeding facilities just like this, we can help repopulate and release these horses back to the wild where they belong. Unfortunately, the paddock for the horses is a little overgrown, with a leaky roof. Frank has called in his brother, Michael, to help with the repairs. Despite being a little run down, but with a little TLC and a lick of paint, this paddock will become the perfect home for these horses. Not to be confused as donkeys. The stalls will act as an offstage area where the horses can seek privacy from the beady eyes of the public. Talking about the public, Mabel has handcrafted a small suggestion box she has placed in the tea room to engage with the local community. Have you ever noticed her delightful artwork framed in the tea room? Yet another skill of Mabel's, drawing and painting is a real hobby that brings her sheer joy. Something we all need in these dark, cold seasons. But soon, the weather will change as we go into March and proceed to spring. Perhaps we'll see a young foal in the months to come. Welcome friends back to Mabel Farm. I hope you guys are doing good. So we are, as the introduction would have suggested, we are building a paddock here for our horses. Now, as I kind of explained in the, the introduction, that this paddock is overgrown, it is a little bit run down, and that is just because I really enjoy building that kind of way. And also the new decals in the game is something that I've never really experienced um, while building with. So here we are just building the stables initially for our um, horses here. I tried my best to actually pronounce what they're called Pizersky? No, I, every time I said it, I always just messed up my words. So uh, we're just calling it horses for the, the purpose of this video. So this is um, a stage door here, as you can see that our horses can pop their little wee heads out. It does look a little bit strange because of the size of everything. You would have seen me going backwards and forwards with the, the building to get lined up with the, the horses to make sure that you know, it was appropriate for the size. I do actually go away and change this because it is a little bit wide. So we, I, I did actually edit it out. So you've not actually seen it in this cut here. But yeah, it, it just kind of looked a little bit funny. So now I feel like it looks a lot, lot better to the size that it should be. Um, these uh, barn doors are extremely chunky as well, but I actually don't think that they look too bad. So this is um, me again, being an absolute idiot and not building necessarily to the grid. As you can see here, I'm, I'm moving things to the side. Uh, this part is absolutely horrendous as well. I'm trying to like get everything all lined up. And because we're using the um, wood here, it's just, it's just a little bit tricky and a little bit fiddly. But if you don't completely zoom into it, you will see that it, it looks fine. <laughs> um, I've also done the interior as well. I've cut that out of this video as well, just because I've literally just threw some brick um, in the middle of this, this building here. And then I thought I'd do some beams. I saw these really gorgeous pictures of stables that had these like fantastic beams that were showing. And I really love that, but this building's just not high enough for it. So I've tried to do a bit of a nod to it really. And then this is just the section here that we're dividing each of the uh, stalls up as well. So we are now moving on to the outdoor area. Uh, I wanted there to be, again, this little overhang on the roof and I just wanted to add in a little bit more detail. So here's some support beams for the, the pillars itself. And then again, just adding like in a little bit of detail here um, around the top top of the the beams there which i think doesn't look too bad uh lots of beams again if you don't add beams to your your planet zoo builds are you a planet zoo builder <laughs> yeah, of course you are uh, and here is the interior again so we're just putting in, in some lights there i feel like there's not enough lights in inside here so you can see that I've sunk this town as well. Originally I was going to be editing that out uh, but I then decided no you know what we'll just keep it in here. So this is the second part of the stalls. Basically what I done was I blueprinted the first part, duplicated it over and then it's just so much faster to build that way. So we're just now trying to figure out the roof as well. 
Uh, here's the janky part that I really love doing. So I know this is not really real realistic unless it was raining, then you would have this water flowing down. And I absolutely love these grungy pieces. Um, I love the idea of this, it, it being like a little bit run down just because the roof kind of caved in a little bit. Um, and it's just the, the structure's just kind of uh, fallen apart. So they have just cordoned this off a bit so that the horses don't get in with all the, the rubbish there and, you know, Frank and, and uh, Michael has decided to come in and hire a skip and try to get it all fixed for them. So this was me just um, thinking, okay, well, we'll make like this little wheelbarrow for the, the food for them. And then I thought, okay, that's not really a great part for this to be in. So this is literally just the, you know, they've, they have been trying to work out how to um, refurbish the place. So we've got some rubble there, we've got some uh, brushes as well, some some bits and bobs. I absolutely love doing this. This is probably my most favourite part in Planet Zoo is adding in that little janky details, which, yeah, just brings me absolute joy. So this is um, obviously the, the fence going around. So we went for a custom fence, kept it relatively simple as well. This paddock is practically a rectangle. Um, and yeah, the backstage area, I wasn't really happy about the look of the in-game pieces. Um, so I thought we would just like make our own own version of a, um, like a fenced off area. Also the colour of it, I couldn't recolour it to be suitable for the rest of the building. So this is why, again, I went away and made my own version of that. So onto the full age now. Um, as I said, this place is totally run down. And the idea was I was trying to put in as much foliage as possible. Now, you guys know Planet Zoo and foliage is just what makes the game. I mean, some would say it's the animals, but hey ho. Um, I tried to put in a little bit of rocks here. I didn't want it to make it like too rocky, but also it just adds a little bit of different texture as well. So literally now we are just spamming down um, all the foliage. I literally filtered it out by um, temperate. Obviously it's based in, in England, so I just thought I'm just going to stick with the temperate biome. I'm not going to look at any other biomes and, and just go from there. Um, I love this idea of there being like a little bit of dips in the, the ground as well, that there's going to be um, puddles as well. So we've only got one puddle. The one at the back I actually did end up um, taking out and then some like couple of trees that they've they've knocked down as well and they've, they've just left it um, in the back there which is you know a little bit of I, I don't know can you call it enrichment for horses considering that they do have enrichment in the game but yeah I just I thought it just needed a bit more texture rather than just having these different um, foliage pieces different bushes and, and all that stuff so yeah back back to just absolutely spamming the heck out of the the new foliage that we have in Planet Zoo. I gotta say, the new DLC, I got um, access to it early. Thank you, Frontier, for allowing me to do that. And um, yeah, I, I worked probably, I think it was like, in this was, the whole build took me eight and a half hours to do. So by the time I speeded it up, it was an hour of footage, then I edited that down to, to 10 minute speed build, what you guys are seeing now. So. It has taken me a lot of time to build this one. This is why it's not necessarily came out straight away when the, the DLC got launched. Um, also, a little bit of personal stuff. I'm currently in the midst of perhaps changing jobs. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on here. But back to the pack. Um, I want to kind of say this straight off the bat here. Um, without the animals, because to be honest, I'm not much of a fan of the the four new animals that we got. I think they could have maybe changed it up a little bit. I love the horses, don't get me wrong. They are my absolute favorite in the whole pack. And I think a lot of the community can agree with that. Um, and also the horses fit in perfect with what I'm trying to achieve here. If you went down the route of just pure conservation, if you just had like this modern build conservation, then absolutely perfect. Um, but because mine is quite stylized, then doesn't really fit in with with what I want to achieve. But the pieces in the game are absolutely fantastic. 
Um, totally lends itself to it. I love the backstage area stuff and uh, I love the the different uh, vegetables that we're getting as well. So obviously being on a the farm, then that is going to be absolutely uh, used to its, its full potential. So we're back inside now and we are building um, this is just where the, the keepers come in. So again, using all, all those prop pieces, which I, I got to say, between the the aquatic pack and this pack, this is probably my favourite one. I mean, the aquatic pack, 100% because of the animals and this one because of the prop pieces. So that is my recommendation that if anyone is ever looking for a Planet Zoo DLC to buy, I would say 100% get this one first out of all of them. And then I would say probably the, the aquatic pack and then maybe like the Australia pack. I, I would happily do like my personal ranking of the packs, but uh, I don't know if anyone would be interested in that, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, back to the backstage area. Love doing this stuff. Do this quite a lot in Prehistoric Kingdom. So this is like just a, a 5S board. In the six days, they probably wouldn't have anything like that, to be honest. Um, but I just like adding in that kind of little detail. And then this was going to be just a notification board. So we're just putting in the horses here. But I wanted to cover this up because I just thought that's just too much information for something to be in the six days. Um, so yeah, we've got like a little meet the horses area here. And then um, I, I was using these these uh, plaques here that I do go away and, and make custom as well. So it gives you a little introduction to all the animals as well. So we'll we'll have a look at that in the real time tour part um, so you guys can see in a lot more detail. But uh, yeah, I'll quickly do a tour. So I'll chat to you guys very soon. Okay guys, so we're going to do a very, very quick tour here. We are just going to have a look at all the little bits and bobs in detail. Uh, so you guys can get a bit of a better understanding of everything. So here's our paddock itself. We've got our three horses um, standing about doing their thing. So this is probably my favorite thing to do in Planet Zoo. I absolutely love building these like grungy, broken down areas. It's, yeah, it's fantastic. I've not necessarily used these a lot. In fact, this is the first time that I've actually even used them. So. I love this. I love how we've got like a broken pipe here. I know this necessarily wouldn't be going that fast. The idea is like there's a little drip going down. Um, and because of that, you know, the, the sides of the walls are, are cracked and then this is went off squint and this one here has just fallen off. So yeah, I love these decals. I think they are just absolutely fantastic. So I really had to include them. So inside, the, there is like obviously these ones that they can go into. This one's um, obviously cracked closed off with the ply board there but yeah the the horses can come into the stables I mean it, there's not like leaking through the roof and we also do have lights in here but I thought I'd just keep these nice and open um, and it's the same for this area so I'll take you through this one because this takes you to our backstage so I really like the idea of having this little gate that we can come in and the keepers can come in that side uh, we've got all the like boxes and stuff we've got a little feeding board as well oh basically all the backstage area stuff uh, our little 5s board as well and then if you come through this door this is ugly as sin because i don't see the point in making this all pretty we do actually have a keeper's hut there as well but yeah um you won't really see any of that so we'll just take you out this side to show you, you guys where it is i've also um i love the idea of you can see actually through the keeper so i don't think that's like such a, a big issue i know planet zoo if the the guests will walk past this they'll be like oh i don't like it and i'm like well tough luck because i think it looks really cool adds a little bit of realism as well so um, we had this section here that I couldn't necessarily board up, so I decided to just put in the animal sign there and there's a little bit of cracks as well, but yeah, I thought it looked kind of cool. If we're just going to go around the habitat as well, this is more of an area for guests to sit and have a picnic. We have a new um, grass pathway, which I think is probably my favourite thing in Planet Zoo. Um, this bit, you know, they've just not maintained very well they will still have to get the lawnmower out. Um, but here we go. This is a little section here that you can meet the, the horses. So we've got all their names here. We've got Ringo, Debbie and Susan, their ages. Um, they are mothers, <laughs> fathers. But yeah, that's, that's a little nod to the next episode. Uh, if you want to go back and, and read it, 
then you can if you want. There's also tells you on the bottom there uh, what they kind of like doing as well. So yeah, a little trellis area. You can sit sit down here, get yourself get yourself like a, a little picnic or whatever, and just watch the horses, which I thought was kind of nice. There's also lights around here as well. So um, in case it gets a little bit dark, then you can go ahead and and chill out here so this then just basically takes you back to the greenhouses which we do have to come in on a live episode and change them out because we do have obviously the new vegetables and stuff so we will be changing them in a live i've just not done it done it just now because of time but basically yeah that takes you back to the tea room and all that goodness one other tiny little thing that i forgot to mention and that's our backstage area which is over here um, I kind of wanted to have this like off a off stage off age off stage area that they can just like store all the rubbish. So again, this kind of takes you around to where the keeper hut is. This bit here, obviously, the grounds kind of came over it, um, which I quite like that. There's also this gate that they can come in and then pick up all the supplies that they need. Um, so this is kind of just like a, a little dumping area, so to speak. So yeah, that is um, everything for this habitat. I think I've shown it off pretty well, I hope. So I'm going to leave you guys with just a, an overview of our habitat. If you have enjoyed it, then please do remember to give it a thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. If you could drop a comment on this video, um, if you'd like to see more Planet Zoo, hit that subscribe button. We have got currently, oh my God, maths. Eight episodes left to go with this project so if you want to see more from maple farm i will leave a link here this is to our episode one where we built the tea room and i will chat to you guys in the next one so until then take care